How's it going, Reef Keepers? This episode is just going to be covering uh, live rock and sand, um, and live rock includes dry rock. So um, in this hobby, we basically have a couple of different options for rock, and one that is much more difficult now than it ever used to be. We've got dry live rock, which manufacturers love to call live rock, but make no mistake, it's not alive. It is something like this. Um, this right here is uh, Marco Rock, and this is just like a, a standard small chunk of it. Probably broken off a larger chunk at some point. I found it kicking around my reef supplies. But that's what it looks like, and that's what I've got in my tank as my aquascape, and it's what I always use. I use a mixture of uh, large base rocks at the bottom and then stack shelf rock uh, on top of it. So uh, you can get both varieties, and the shelf rock is more expensive because it is fancier. Um, and then as far as other rock options, you can utilize a company like Tampa Bay Saltwater. Um, maybe Tampa Bay Live Rock is what they're called. I can't remember, but there's a company obviously in Tampa Bay that will actually go out and seed rock by dropping it in the ocean uh, and leave it out there for however many months that it takes for it to get all of the beneficial bacteria and ocean biome on it naturally. And then they will haul it up and keep it wet and put it in tubs and ship it out. And it is extremely expensive to ship. I mean, you have to keep it alive, you have to keep it in water, you have to keep it, uh, you know, certain temperature when they have it at the facility. I mean, there's, plus just shipping alone of something that heavy is extremely expensive. So I understand that they have shipping limitations, but trust me, it is pricey. And in my opinion, especially if you're looking at a budget approach, it's almost better to do dry rock for your tank, use a bottled bacteria like um, Fritz Turbo Start 900 or something of that nature. Uh, Dr. Tim's has good options as well. Um, I understand that um, there's several different companies that have good bacteria to seed your tank with um, and have had great reviews. So just, just look around and see what people have utilized. I always utilize Turbo Start 900 myself. It's worked great. And then after this is seeded with bottled bacteria, maybe then get a small, you know, eight or 10 pound shipment of Tampa Bay Live Rock and drop some of it into your filtration chambers or into your sump and allow that diversification of bacteria. Um, if you have the money, I mean, I personally, I'd probably go with all Live Rock if I had the money, um, but I don't. I mean, it's outrageous cost for rock. So, um, and then you've got sand, of course, and sand is something that seems to come up a ton on reef forums. I've got two kinds here. So one kind I learned the hard way, and I'm glad I, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't put more of it in the tank. This is a sealed bag of Carib Sea live sand. So live sand has been taken, you know, out with it has actual ocean, you know, uh, bacteria that live in the sand and is taken and sealed in a very tough, very thick bag. And um, that sand serves as a way to increase the biome in your tank right from the start. The problem with this sand is it's Fiji pink, which is without a doubt the most gorgeous sand that you can put in your tank. It looks beautiful until you turn your wave makers on. It is far, far too fine for most tanks uh, for the flow of most tanks. I do not suggest Fiji pink as undeniably beautiful as it is, right? There are specific circumstances, specific tanks that can utilize it. I would not, uh, I advise against it. Instead, I advise something like this, which is aragonite sand, right? Crushed aragonite. Um, and it is just standard special grade uh, which is uh, probably the most popular in the hobby. Bulk Reef Supply says it's their most popular seller. Special grade Carib Sea Aragonite, you know, sand. Just go with what <laughs> the majority of the hobby has found success with when it comes to sand. And I would say to you that, just we'll look at my tank. I'll show you. You can see there's a ton of live rock. And I've had very few major, like, algae outbreaks um in the life of this tank 
And I attribute that partially to the fact that I have more live rock than most people do. Um, also, I attribute it partially to how relatively thin my sand bed is. I think most of us, when we're going for a sand bed, we just want, if you want sand in the tank at all, you just want to look at it. Um, the benefits of the deep sand bed in the hobby have been kind of disproven at this point. I know some people still run them, um, but in general, people know that a deep sand bed is going to encourage the buildup of the negative waste that we try to get out of our system. So even though there are some thicker areas of sand where like the fish and current kick it up, in general, I would say about this height sand, so like half inch to three quarter inch, is what I've got throughout the tank. And that seems to perfectly satisfy, you know, what I, what I need it to do. It looks pretty. There's not too much of it. I can easily rake it and get the detritus up. Um, I've got a diamond goby that seems, you know, healthy and happy, just sifting through that level of sand all day. Doesn't seem to need more. So on an 80 gallon tank, you know, but I guess really any gallon size tank, I would probably stick to like about half an inch of sand. That's, that's what I would recommend. Um, that seems to be the safe zone. So, um, and I would actually go for, you know, I know some people love those negative space aquascapes and all the spindly little art project looking scapes. I personally, this is just me. I would go with more rock, you know, not too much that you're inhibiting your flow or anything like that, but more rock rather than less rock because every extra inch of rock that you put in there is more real estate for that beneficial bacteria to colonize, right? Um, and keep that biological filtration strong. So anyhow, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you are enjoying the series and would like more of these, which I plan to, I plan to produce more, but it always helps to get some support. Go ahead and uh, like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it, guys. Thanks.